Vibrant and Brushworks of YouTube, and I am trying something different with the Weekend Way. Here we go. In order, we are going to talk about Super Smash Brothers. I'm going to mention something about my channel, and then we're going to do Lucky Gift. Three different booster packs. And then afterwards, I will answer your questions. Right now, this is live, so if you are interested in checking it out, come see me. So, I, you all may know, I reacted to the latest Super Smash Brothers direct. I'm doing great, dance kid. And I thought that was a great reaction. However, because of some of the reacting I was doing, I missed out on a few important key things to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. First off, the first thing I want to mention is the stage more. I was super excited about that, but I missed one little detail. You can only pick two stages. Two. Only two. In my head, I was thinking, oh my gosh, you can morph from Luigi's Mansion to Paper Mario to Legend of Zelda, and we can play all the stages. Yay! No, 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 no. Slow down. There's only so much the Switch can handle. So, Stage Morph can only handle two different stages. So you pick the two stages you want from that menu, and it goes between those two stages only. For example, Carlos Pokemon League, well, no, excuse me. Yeah, Carlos Pokemon League and Pokemon Steam 2. So it starts with the Cause Pokemon League, then it goes to Pokemon Stadium 2, and then back to Cause League, and it does that however long you want the match to go, where it be stock the time. So, there's that. Um, I'm trying to think of some other things, because I didn't write some of this down. I recently watched the, my reaction to the Direct again to try to catch up on some things. For some reason, I can't remember some of the other stuff. I don't know. That's not good. Um, I guess you could let me know your thoughts on the Super Smash Brothers Direct. Even though it's old, it's back on August 8th. I mean, it's still August, but it was still a few weeks back. Like I said, I'm trying to remember some of the pointers I wanted to mention for Super Smash Bros. Okay, I guess there was the... It's one of the new modes. But I thought it was like 10 versus 5 versus 5. Well, what I didn't realize with whatever that mode's called. Squad Strike. That's what it was. In Squad Strike, you pick 5 different characters to be on a single team. Now, there's only 2 teams fine, which means it's 1 on 1. Which means, no, there's not a 10 versus Excuse me, a 10 versus match. You can only have up to eight characters, sorry, eight characters flying at the same time. So with Squad Strike, what that really is, is that you pick, you and your friend pick five different characters you want to use in Squad Strike. Either that or you have 10 different people playing between two different teams. One red team of five, and one blue team of five. So, again, <laughs> some stuff that I ended up misinterpreting that I wanted to make sure that I got off my chest while I was thinking about it. Uh, let's see. Dance Kids excited about King K. Wool coming. I know! I know, I know, I know! I don't think I expressed just how excited I was. Yes, I want Dixie. That's just me. I would love to see Dixie in Smash. But King K. Rule's a big deal. King K. Rule is under Rare. Rare was the one that started creating the Donkey Kong Country games. So when Rare was bought out by Microsoft, a lot of that Donkey Kong property, including Diddy Kong in some ways, was still owned by Rare. Now, Nintendo found ways to get some of that stuff back via Donkey Kong Country Returns. I don't know the whole story. But King K. Wu and anything Kremlin-related 
was still property of Rare, even though Microsoft wasn't going to use it anyways. So I'm elated to see King K. Wu back, despite the fact that, you know, he used to be owned by Rare. I don't know the details to that. I'm just excited that that's a thing. Um, okay, some things that I did think about after watching the direct a couple of times. First off, Saw. Now, I mentioned this in one of my live streams, but beforehand, I wanted Saw to be in Smash, Saw from Kingdom Hearts. I really believe that could be a thing, but that's like asking for Shrek or Thomas the Tank Engine to be in there. It's funny. It may be absolutely awesome if it happens, but Nintendo has to get permission from other people. Square Enix create the Final Fantasy series. And thank goodness I remembered it at that time. Square Enix also created Kingdom Hearts. However, Kingdom Hearts is also under Disney because you got Mickey Mouse, Goofy, Minnie Mouse, Daisy Duck, all the Disney movies, Aladdin, Little Mermaid. You get the point. Even though Sora isn't exactly a Disney character, obviously, Square Enix mostly, I have the feeling that anything Kingdom Hearts related would have to be approved not only by Square Enix, but also Disney. So, there's a chance that Sora might not be in Smash Bros. I don't know if there's been any quote-unquote leaks for that. But, I mean, I've heard a lot of leaks, including, well, I, I'm not going to say what leaks there are. I will say this, and this has to do with, oh, uh, boy. It has to do with Monster Hunter. That's what it was, Monster Hunter. We all saw Vithalos, hopefully I got that name right, but Vithalos show up as a boss character and an assist trophy. And one of the things I noticed is the stage that Mythalos was on. So I was saying, okay, there's going to be a monster hunter stage. I have a different idea to that now. What if, what if that sneak peek of a stage, as I called it, is the adventure mode? What if Mythalos is a boss you fight in the new adventure mode that could supposedly be for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Can you see that? I don't know how big the adventure mode or quote-unquote new subspace in the series is going to be, but there's a good chance that that the follows stage that they were showing could be part of adventure mode. And that's my thoughts on it. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me check the comments for a moment. Let's see. Dance Kid said, My first match is going to be Pikachu versus Mario in Paper Mario to Saffron C. I'll be Pikachu. I don't know what my first match will be since I'm hoping that I can get online and live stream the whole thing. But we'll just have to see. Um, looks like that's about it. I think that's all I need to say about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So I'm going to change to a different topic and change to some different music because now I can do that. So that's from Super Mario Sunshine. Why? Because something big has happened. I finally purchased a Nintendo GameCube memory card, and the most um, room it has, one of the bigger ones, uh, let me think, the one with the most space. So I've got a Nintin excuse me, Nintendo memory card that has the most space. Why is this important? Remember. I teased during the beginning of summer that I got a Nintendo Wii. Aside from one thing that's not going to happen this summer, sorry. But aside from that one thing that I haven't really told anyone, 
I bought the Nintendo Wii just so I could play GameCube games. You may not know this, but I used to own the Nintendo GameCube. However, concerning Cohen Bros, Co from Cohen Bros, he wanted a GameCube. So I decided, all right, I'll be the nice guy and I'll give him my Nintendo GameCube. Even though that means I have to give him every single GameCube game I ever owned. Including Amazing Island, which is like one of my favorite cult classic Nintendo GameCube games. With this, and with the Nintendo Wii over there, I'm not going to showcase it, I can play Nintendo GameCube games again, and I can do LPs on them. So, let me know in the chat room, and let me know in the comments below, what Nintendo GameCube games you would like to see me play. Speaking of being nice, I'm going to share this story since I keep forgetting about it. A few weeks ago, nay, probably even a month ago, I was... First off, I just went to Sandemonium. I bought myself this, which I ended up talking about a year ago on my We The Play channel. But I finally bought that card game. But despite that, I was trying to get the money so I would have money for Sandemonium, which I'm going to post a video about that by the end of next week, hopefully. Or the end of this week, I mean. <laughs> One of the two. Thanks. I need the money, but at the same time, I need to buy something for... I need to buy those silly Uncrustables that I'm going to talk about later. For my brothers and King Shy Guy 92 to have while we were down at Sandemonium. So I had to use some of that money. So I end up giving the cashier a $20 bill. This might not be 100% accurate of the story, but I'm trying to remember it as best as I can. I give the cashier a $20 bill. And of course, I need to get change for as in the $10 bill or something like that because I bought a few other things. So the cashier gives me the change and I just stuff it into the envelope. And I'm counting the money and something doesn't add up. Either that or more accurately, something was adding up but it was adding up to be too much. And I remember that I only had so many 20s in the envelope. So, I look at the envelope, which is supposed to have like $100, but after taking 20 out, there should be $80 left. There was 90 So, I'm trying to figure out, wait, did I make a mistake? No. No, 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 no. Oh, wait. Was it $90? Yeah, it was $90. Okay. The cashier made a huge mistake. She was supposed to give me change for a 20. Well, you know, $10 for the products, $10 back to me. I feel like I'm lousing up this story for some reason. Basically, I got back the same amount of money I gave her. So she was going to give me change, but she ended up giving me half of the change that I was supposed to give to her. So basically, I had more money than I should have. Now, I could have decided to walk out and say, Whoopee! Nope. I'm too nice of a guy to do that. I went back to the cashier, and I said, Hey, you gave me 10 extra. I don't want to see you get in trouble. Take it. Okay, maybe I didn't say the trouble thing. But I used to work at Walmart. I used to be a cashier, and I should know from experience that if you work as a cashier, every time your shift ends, the person ahead of you, or at least the manager, is supposed to count the money, and there's supposed to be an exact amount in there based on each purchase. And if there's too little or too much money, then you're going to be the one in trouble. A.K.A. the cashier, if I had taken that extra $10, could have been fired. 
I mean, it kind of happened to me once. So I decided to be the nice guy because I know how this kind of thing goes. Sometimes people make mistakes. And even though I could have taken that money and used it for something selfish, I decided, hey, she needs to have that money back because if that money's not accounted for in the register by the end of the day, then she could be fired. And I'm too nice of a guy to let that happen, I guess. So I gave her the money and I walked away. So that's the story. <laughs> I feel like I messed up a little bit on that, but despite that, um, that's about how it goes. Now, I'm going to tone down the music for a moment because there is something I have to mention, and I'm not exactly happy about it. This is the Aver Media. This is what I use to record every single Nintendo Switch thing in HD. It is great. I love it. But at the same time, I can't help but feel scared it's going to mess up my recordings. And that's exactly what happened today. Today. I was recording ARMS. I press the button, and each time it records, it's supposed to do this red pulsing motion. Like, at first it pulses a bright red, and then it dims down to a darker red, and then just repeats like that. So as long as it's pulsing, that means it's recording. But is it saving? Hmm... That's where the problem lies. It looks like it's recording, and you would think after you press the button and it flashes for a small moment to show that it's done recording, that it saved the recording. But for a couple of different times, including today with ARMS, and months ago with Sonic Forces, which I don't want to talk about, I lose the recording instantly. It's gone. It's like it never existed. And again, that's what happened with my arms recording. I went through a couple of different characters and stages. I pressed the button when I was done recording. I took the memory card out. I guess the memory card's not in there right now, but anyways. And I put it in my computer to take that recording and save it to my computer. That recording was nowhere to be found, which means I lost the entire recording, believing that this thing had recorded it. I've been looking online for like two hours to try to find a solution to this, and I swear I haven't found anything that would help me. Maybe people using the Xbox or PlayStation and people do ha that have the second version of this. But nothing to help me and my situation with the Nintendo Switch. So I've sent a letter to the people that make the Aver Media stuff. And I hope to hear back from them soon. Until then, there's a possibility that... And you're going to hate hearing this. There's a possibility that you might not be able to see some content from me regarding the Nintendo Switch, including ARMS, which I promised to do this week. There's nothing I can do about it at this time other than use caution. Now, anyone that knows me knows that I've been using the flip video camera for just about every single project ever. That even includes the times I use the Aver Media because I'm using this camera to record my voice. Now, beforehand, I had the TV playing on the same volume as my camera because, well, now that I think about it, maybe that wasn't a good reason. But at the same time, when I'm playing a new game, I want to hear the volume. So I have my TV volume going at the same time this is going. So it's recording the audio and video to it. But at the same time, this is recording the audio. 
to not only my voice, but the TV. So the hardest thing for me to do is to synchronize the volume and voice to the um, audio and picture of the video. It, it's a lot of technical stuff. My point being is that I bought these. Um, forget the green cord for a moment. I bought these so I can wear them on my head and I could listen to the TV volume without actually having the TV volume on, which means I can hear the game in here like a professional YouTuber while still recording it to here. I use the flip video to record my voice, my perfect squeaky voice. <laughs> Don't know why I did that. And then I record the footage to here. So, the point is that when this is catching the volume of my voice, it's not catching the volume of the TV because I have the TV muted. But I can still hear the game through these headphones. So it's supposed to make things easier. But here's the thing. If I'm not recording the TV or the volume to the game through the TV on this thing, and this thing refuses to record anything, then I've done nothing. All I've done is talk into this thing, and you're not going to see what's playing because this thing didn't record anything. It, it, is, anyone, is anyone getting this? I, I feel like I kind of got a little too wrapped up in this, but it is a problem and I'm not sure what to do about it. If you own this or if you know anything about this, please let me know if there's something I can do to make it better. I do not own a good computer, so I can't just plug this into a computer and record that way. It has to be in um, TV free mode. Oh, not TV free mode. Uh, PC free mode. So, let me know if there's something that I can do to resolve this problem. Because until then, I cannot promise that I'll be able to get Nintendo Switch HD content recorded when I say I can. Because if this thing doesn't choose to record even when I press the button. I have to start all over again. And that scares me the most when it comes to games like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Because I can't just start over and go back to a specific save point. Well, I could as long as I don't turn off the game. That's something to remember. But until I can find out how to make sure this thing records every single time I press the button and not have to worry about it messing me up because RNG or something, I can't promise that I'm going to get all my Nintendo Switch videos done on time or done in a good timely manner where it doesn't take weeks to get done. We'll see what happens, but hopefully I can find a way to resolve that. But if you have any ideas how to resolve it, let me know. So, now that I took about 10 minutes to talk about that, let's find something else to do. And in this case, it's going to be... Um, hold on. Oh. Is going to be the lucky dip. But first, let me read some comments because I've kind of been skipping out on that a little bit. Uh, Dance Kid likes the music. He wants me to play Double Dash. Okay, I can borrow that from Galaxy Wiz. I want to play all the Mario Karts at some point. Um, Dance Kid says, cool story. He's probably talking about when I gave the money to the cashier. Uh, Dance Kid says, what did you do, oh, excuse me, why did you do that with the voice recorder? Um, maybe the video? 
I mean, that's the only way I can get my commentary said. Um, yo, Carlos, welcome to the stream. It's a short stream, short-ish. And I was just talking about all kinds of different stuff. Now, I'm going to do the lucky bit. As you can see, there are random Pokemon card packs in there. And without looking, I'm going to be taking out three of them and opening them on camera. So, let's see. Is this three? No, it's not. Um, all right, I'll tell you which ones you want to pick. So, we have Sun and Moon, Guardians Rising. We have Pokemon Sun and Moon base set. We got Burning Shadows. Why all the Sun and Moon packs? And we got Fate Collide. Out of these four card packs that I happen to have chosen... Which one do you not want me to open? Which one do you want me to save? Quickly let me know in the chat room. Do we want just all sun and moons or do we want fates collide to be shown? Uh, not really getting a response. Okay. Type one if you want fates collide to be open today. Let me see some ones, please. Any ones? This is what happens when I don't have enough people watching. All right, I'm just going to open Sun and Moon and Guardians Rising. Before I finish opening both of these packs, let me know which one you want. Face Collide or Sun and Moon Burning Shadows. Type one for Fates Collide or two for Burning Shadows. And let me know by the end of me opening these two. So we'll start off with the base set. Let me open it down here so we don't see the cards. But I will show off the code card right here. So type in this number or scan this barcode in order to use it because I'm not. With that said, we are going to take the first three Pokemon cards and put them in the front. That will leave us with a reverse holo, a rare, and then an energy card at the end. Looks like Carlos wants it to be Fate Collide. The Ant Kid wants it to be Burning Shadows, so it's tied right now. But while we're trying to figure that out, we might have to flip a coin, by the way. We've got... Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to best do this. We got Corsola, um, Trumbeak, Energy Switch. I'm sorry I have to keep looking back at them. Dratini. Lillipop, Bonsley, no, that's Bounce my bad. <laughs> Psyduck, Litten, the reverse is going to be Polosan, Polosan, very cool. And the rare is. It's live, everyone! You got to see a Lapras GX card. Opened live. Oh my gosh, this thing is awesome. Maybe a little extreme for my collection, but wow. Lapras GX. That looks so cool. I'm not sure if I'm going to add it to my collection or not. I may sell it. I might sell it. So if you're interested, let me know. And then the energy card is fighting. Uh, let's see. Looks like it's a tie right now. So, there's a good chance I'm going to have to flip a coin to decide between Burning Shadows and Fates Collide. We got one more pack to open, which would be <laughs> Guardians Rising. So, I will do that quickly. 
move this code card out of the way and take the first three cards and put them in front. With that said, we have Vanillish. Um, Choice Band. Uh, I can't pronounce this. Aloma Mola? Aloma Mola. That's a really great card. I'll probably add that to my collection. Alolan Sanchu, Machop, Chansey, Snowbunt, this very cute Pancham, the reverse is going to be Probo Pass, and the rare is going to be... What is that? Oh, or Koyo. It's going to be the Dark Oracoil? Which one was it? No, it's Psychic. Of course, it's the Psychic Oracoil, I think. Is it Psychic? Yeah, I think this is the Dark Uh, Let me see if I can read the description. <laughs> I need some light. Oracoyo has sick purple neck. It's elegant, attractive, dance, girl. Okay, it doesn't say exactly which one it is. Gosh darn it. Well, you can let me know in the comments. And then this is the Mel Energy. Let's oh, no, really cute little thing. Um, it looks like we've reached an impasse with which one of these to open. So I'm going to have to find and flip a coin. Dance Kid looks like he's interested in the Lapras. Okay, we'll talk later. I'll try to remember that. I might have to write a note. And I'm not sure where I'm going to find the coin. Hmm. Okay, BRB. I need to grab a quarter. Thanks for waiting. Sorry, Tepig. So I got a quarter here. Heads, barely see it. But heads, we pick Burning Shadows. Tails, Fates Collide. So hopefully I can do this correctly. I'm gonna flip it. And then I'm gonna lose it. Okay, I'm gonna grab another quarter. We'll try this differently. Uh, all right, rather than trying to flip it and catch it, which apparently I don't have enough um, hand eye coordination to do that. We're going to try to get it to land on my 3DS case. So we'll flip it. And it is heads. Can you tell? It is definitely heads. So Fates Collide is going to have to wait another day. Sorry about that, Carlos. Sun and Moon Burning Shells wins. Like we haven't opened enough Pokemon Sun and Moon cards already. For always being the newest cards, I want to collect as many as I can anyways. So I'm, I'm happy with this, especially if I get something good. Move this out of the way, take the first three cards and put them in the front. And here comes the last of the cards. We've got Rotom Deck. Um, Pokey find the mode. Couldn't read that for a moment. We've got Po Town trainer card. We've got the weakness policy. Cutie fly. Riolu. Ride on. Excuse me, by horn. My bad. Tangela. Dupider. The reverse hollow is going to be Escape Rope. 
and the rare will be regular um turinator i knew that turinator when we got fire angie so obviously the star card is going to be the lapis gx but i've got like a bunch of cards here so i can't find it right now but yeah that's gonna be the end of lucky deck wherever i put my bag lucky deck this one i'm gonna need to find the money to be able to fill this up again because if i do three packs i'm gonna run out of cards pretty quickly but we'll just see how that ends up so before i go let's do some q a I'm going to look at the chat room quickly. Um, I already answered the play double dash thing. And I guess that's about all the questions. Okay, do you have any questions or suggestions you would like for me or my LPs? Like, what LPs do you want me to try to focus on this week? Remember what I said about the Switch. Even though I spent, like, way too much time with it. Until I can fully trust this thing to work. Sorry about the glare behind me. I didn't expect that. But until I can get this thing to fully work, I can't promise that I'm going to be able to get as many Nintendo Switch HD videos out. So hopefully I can find a resolution to that soon. So we might want to focus on some other different game titles, like Namco Museum Mega Mix or Pokemon Fire Red, for example. Uh, let's see. Dance Kid says, do you have a dog? Not in my apartment. My family used to own some dogs, including a Western White Terrier, which was the cutest thing ever. But currently, none of us have a dog, and I don't plan to have any pets in my apartment anytime soon. I have pets and I have Pokemon. I don't know. <laughs> that sounds weird. This kid's got all kinds of questions. Can you do Smash for 3DS soon? I already did that recently. However, since I got all the characters on Super Smash Bros. 3DS, I am going to try to do some episodes of Super Smash Bros. 3DS on my Wii the Beat channel. I'll type that down so everyone knows what to copy and paste in the search window to find that. But on Wii the Beat, I tried to beat games fully, 100% would be objectives to games. So far, I've only focused mostly on Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz, which is kind of on a little bit of a hiatus. And the gosh darn shiny Tepic Hunt. I spent 11 hours trying to find a shiny Tepic and I couldn't find one. So I'm a bit bummed about that. I don't know when I'm going to come back to that. But I do want to add some more stuff to my Read the Beat channel, including games that I haven't fully beaten yet, including Super Mario Odyssey. I want to showcase myself getting every single move. I don't know when that's going to happen, but that is something I would like to happen. So, going back to what I was saying before, I'm moving my Super Smash Bros. 3DS gameplay to Wii to Beat. That does not mean I can't do live streams of me playing Super Smash Bros. 3DS on my Wii to Play channel. It just means that in order to get everything done, now that I got all the characters, I mean, I, mean, I could wait till I get all the stages, but that could take a while. I'm going to be doing all my accomplishments, trying to beat all the missions on my Wii to Beat channel. That's not going to be live stream. That's just going to be regular videos. So hopefully you come through for those. And I'll try to do start doing that this week. So look forward to that. Um, Dance Kid asked, Are you going to do Super Smash Bros. Ultimate after Christmas? Because I'm getting SSBU at Christmas. Dance Kid, I'm buying it day one. If everything goes right for me, you're going to see a live stream on the day it comes out. Now, that's also going to be on my Wii to Beat channel. However, 
As long as I can get this fixed. Although I probably will be using my flip video anyway, so in case I can't get it in HD, I can just get it on this rinky thing. But when Super Smash Brothers Ultimate comes out, I'm buying it day one. I want to live stream it around midnight. I'm not going to say exactly at midnight because I still have to get the GameStop and then get back. But if everything goes right, I am going to try to live stream it as soon as on the day it comes out. Like an hour after it hits store shelves at midnight. That's my plan. Regardless whether that plan works or not, I will be recording tons and tons of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate content. So to simplify the answer, yes. I will be doing... Um, hold on, let me check that. I basically will be playing and live streaming Super Smash Bros. Ultimate after Christmas. That game's gonna be on my channel for quite a while. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. Dance Kid says I'm going to get it on the 25th of December, which of course is Christmas. Jack the Gamer is asking the voice chat. No, I can't. This video is just about over. I'm just trying to answer some questions you may have for me and get ideas of stuff you would like me to play. Let's go back to the GameCube for a moment. What other GameCube games would you like me to play? At some point, this is gonna go past the GameCube, by the way. But at some point, I want to post a list of every single game I've ever played slash completed and post it for everyone to see. Because my goal for my Read to Play channel, aside from maybe getting paid to do this, is to play every single game I ever played. Super Mario Bros. Super Mario Bros. Excuse me. Super Mario World. Pokemon Blue. I mean, I'm playing Pokemon Green and Pokemon Yellow, but I guess I might as well play Pokemon Blue. More details on that on the later date. Um, some of the obscure games, like Quest 64. I never said that I liked it, but I played it. I played Quest 64. Don't ask me about the Nintendo 64 games yet. I'm trying to get something going with that. Because I don't currently own the Nintendo 64. I wish I could. Galaxy Wish does, but this channel's not exactly PG. And it would be kind of nice to play some of these games without him watching my every move and commenting. So, eventually, let's just say by next year, I want to see if I can find a way to record Nintendo 64 games. I can't get into details about that because... There is something I'm looking into. At this point, it doesn't seem possible, but if I can get the money, I can make it possible. And if it all works out, you're going to be very happy with what you see. I've got a lot of projects, a lot of summer projects, to be honest, but it's kind of a, basically not summer anymore, so... But I still got a lot of projects to do. Tons of games to play. I want to come back to Amazing Island and play that. Although I have some ideas of how to do that LP. But there's so much. There's so much on my channel. I mean, we could talk about all kinds of new projects I could do. But well, I think what we need to focus on, even though I just asked this question like three minutes ago, is what project should I put the most focus on? Stuff that I started like two years ago and haven't finished, including Pokemon Fire Red. I need to finish that. I need to finish that. So what projects would you like me to try to put the most focus on this week and all the weeks coming? Like, let me know. 
if you can. I don't know if anyone else is typing anything. If you let me know either in the chat room that I'll have open for maybe like another five minutes or less, or comment down below. Also, just a random community question, which pick your top three favorite plushies that I've shown in this episode. Is it Zoo the Pikachu, who I've had almost the entire time Pokemon has been a thing? Is it Happy the Easy? Is it Vanessa the Superior? Is it Uski the Guja? Or is it my fan favorite Blitz the Shiny Tepig? Let me know if you want to in the comments or chat room. I'm kind of running out of time though. So quickly let me know if there's any other questions you'd like me to answer. In the meantime, I'd like to talk more about Story Master. I'll probably try to list a link to that video because it was a year ago, so it'll be hard to find. But I'll try to put a link down below in the comments for the video where I showcase this. But basically, in the short run, actually, I'll just read the back of the box. It says airplane, boat, tent, skull. I think that says skull. It looks like short, but so. Ever wonder what kind of story someone could make out of these random words? Well, stop wondering and bug this box. Buy this box. I don't know why I thought that was bug. Buy this box. A simple little game with endless amounts of fun. Test your skills at making a short story within a couple of minutes that will leave your friends in awe. Be the story master. And just in case you didn't know already, this is by Boards. Excuse me. Yeah, okay. This is by Board to Death, which is a company that I've seen at Sandemonium. And I ended up recording myself, actually live streaming myself, trying out this game, and it's a lot of fun. You get one word, and you basically try to make a story out of that word. There's a second version to the game. I can't remember exactly how it goes, but you can find that in the link below once I post it. Uh, let's check the comments one more time. What are they called? It is called Story Master. Simple enough. Story Master. And it's from the company... Bored to death, the number two. I was hoping at one point, because I actually teased this to me, that they might promote my videos. But I mean, a year's gone by and nothing's happened. Heck, the person I talked to when I got this didn't even know me, so rip that dream. But still, I really love the game, regardless if I'm getting paid to promote it or not, which I am not. This is not an endorsement. There's no way I can prove that, but trust me, no one wants to endorse me. I'm not that famous yet, so no endorsement. I just liked it. I bought it. Doesn't matter if I showcase it on my YouTube channel or not for friends or fans. I enjoy the game itself, so that's why I bought it. I didn't buy it for publicity. I just bought it because it's fun. And if you think it's fun too, if you're interested in it, then check out the Board to Games website and maybe buy yourself a copy. I think they have some other things too. I'm just not sure what they are. Again, not an endorsement. I'm just saying I like this game enough to buy it. You, I was talking by the Pokemon. Talking about Pokemon. So you want me to list their names again? I mean, I could just list which Pokemon they are. But I'm going to do it quickly again. Zoo the Pikachu. Hap V the Eevee. Vanessa the Superior. Uski the Gudra. And Blitz the Shiny Tepid. Which three are your favorites? out of 
everyone here. I'm always gonna have Blitz beside me because, you know, Blitz is like my favorite. He would be my partner Pokemon if I was a Poketuber. I'll even type the names down just to make it easier. Who do you like? No, excuse me. Let's try that again. Which three do you like the most? Zoo, Pikachu, um, Cap, D, UV, the Nest Superior, Use Key, Doodra, or Blitz, Tepig. Remember, Blitz is a shiny. Not not a very affordable shiny. $500. Only buy a shiny Tepig plush if you can afford that kind of luxury. I think that's gonna be about it. So, I'm gonna stop this music and I'm going to fish out this one. So I'll just start where it last stopped. Anyways, this is going to be the... Okay, Dance Kid says that his favorites are Happy Bolts, that's Blitz with an I, and Vanessa. Hey, good to know. Look at that Happy Vanessa. She's like the newest one. Anyways, I gotta go. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments anything else you'd like me to know about, including, excuse me. And let me know if you liked that I live streamed this, that I live streamed my weekend wave. I don't know how many people are going to be interested in that, but I could definitely do it more. It might even be a little easier for me. I don't know. Just let me know in the comments your thoughts about this week in Wave and about all the subjects I talked about, including this. Now all the news had to be good news. But I'm going to have to get going. So thanks for watching once again, and thank you to all the subscribers. You guys are the best. It means so much to me to have people subscribing to my channel because they love my content or the content creator I am. So, thank you. So, until my next videos, till my next projects, this has been We The Play. I got nothing left to say, so I hope you enjoy your day. Catch you later.